The last part of this section are some special cases, but we can't see that just from looking at the systems. So we'll behave like we don't know and try to solve using the elimination method. So if I want to eliminate y, I'm just choosing one of them, in the first system, what has to happen? They have the exact same coefficient on the front, 1, and I need them to be opposites. So it doesn't matter which one we alter, I'm going to multiply the second one by a factor of negative 1. So our equivalent system, the first one didn't change. Second one, every single term needs to be multiplied by a negative. Now when we do that, if we add them together, the y's are going to be gone. What also happens? The x's are going to be gone. So I have 0 on the left. And what do I have on the right? 1. Can I ever make 0 be equal to 1? No. So we came down to a statement that's never true. So what does that mean? Is there a solution to this system? Can I ever meet make the same lines that have different uh, values on the right be equal to each other. No, not going to happen. So this is no solution. And what kind of lines are those then? If we come down to a statement that's never true, there's no solution to the system. So what does the picture look like? They're never touching. They never have an intersection point. So we're dealing with parallel lines. They have the same slope, different y-intercepts. Okay. So when we have no solution, the set notation for that is the empty set. The set containing nothing. Empty set. That's what we write when we say no solution. Set containing nothing. Nothing will make it true. All right, in the second case, let's say I want to work towards eliminating x just so we're all on the same page. If you could eliminate y, you'll get the same result. But I'm going to eliminate x, so what do I need to alter? If I'm going to alter the first equation, it's going to be by a factor of what? 4, so I can have opposites here. So if I multiply everything up here by 4, equivalent system, every single term by 4, 8x plus... 12y equals 6 times 4, 24. And this one didn't change. And what do you notice as we eliminate x? As I add those together, we designed it to get rid of x, but what also did we get rid of? y's and everything on the right as well. 24 minus 24 is 0. So, can I have 0 be equal to 0? Yeah, I can always make that be true. This is always true. So, what does that mean? Does it matter what I plug in? No, because I'm always going to come down to this true statement. So, we have infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. We can plug in whatever we want. And we're going to satisfy both at the same time. So what does that tell me about these two? They're the exact same lines. They're lying right on top of each other. And when I satisfy one, I'm satisfying the other at the same time. It just looks different. But it is the same line. So, these are the same lines. The set notation. What is going to make this true? It's not a single point where they're touching. They're touching everywhere, but it has to be on that line. So if I have a line, line on top of another one, I can't choose random points out here. It's not going to satisfy the system. But if I choose any point that's on the line, I'm going to satisfy both of them at the same time. So we have a whole bunch of coordinate pairs, a whole bunch of x's and y's, and what has to be true? It's like our one-dimensional set notation. All the variables that we're dealing with, but in this case, they're points. And they have to lie on the line. They can't be randomly out floating around. So it has to lie on 2x plus 3y equals 6. Or the other one, but generally we go with the most simplified form. 
and in standard form when we report it. So that tells us what our solutions look like. They have to lie on the line, but they satisfy both at the same time. So go ahead and take those two systems, try solving them, give your answers in set notation. So the first example, both of them are already in, well both of them are in that standard form. Let's just say we want to eliminate x. If you eliminate a y, you're going to get the same thing. Cool part about math. So if I want to eliminate x, I'm going to multiply that first one by a factor of 3. So every single term by a factor of 3. So 15x minus 6y is equal to 9. I didn't change the second one, but what do you notice? They're opposites, so when we add them together, what are we getting? 0 is equal to 0. So what happens? It's always true. So there's infinitely many solutions. Infinite solutions. Picture-wise, what are we looking at? The exact same line. One is just a multiple of the other. Same lines. So the set notation, what does it look like? What will satisfy this system? Any point that lies on the line 5x minus 2y is equal to 3. So that tells me again, the set containing a whole bunch of points such that this is true. They fall on that line. All right. If you eliminated y, you got the same thing. In the second system, if I want to eliminate x, I'll alter the top one by a factor of negative 2. So every single term multiplied by negative 2. And the second one was unchanged. And what do we get when we add those together? What did you get? X's are gone. Y's are gone. So I've got 0 on the left. And what over on the right? Negative 7. That's never going to be true. So, we don't have any solutions. And what do those lines look like? Changing at the same rate at the same time, but they start at different, different heights. So these are, not the same lines, parallel. Parallel lines. The last system that we want to look at is one of our most complicated cases we've seen yet. So how do we solve systems that involve decimals or fractions like this one. How can we alter them to get rid of all of those fractions? So when we had just one equation to deal with, so the upper one, how can I clear out all of those denominators? Multiplying by the LCD, which is what in that case? Six. So I could multiply everything up top by six, get an equivalent equation, just looks different, and what do we need to multiply the bottom by? LCD between all of those is 10. So we can either multiply by the LCD, if we have fractions, or if we have decimals and we want to move them to whole numbers. Multiples of 10. So if I need to move it two decimal points, multiplying by a factor of 100 everywhere. So let's go ahead and take that. Again, we discussed LCD of the top. Multiply every single term by 6, we'll clear out those fractions. Every single term down here by 10. So our equivalent system is what? 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. 6 divided by 6 gives me 1, and it was negative. So this is equivalent. Same line, just looks different. We like whole numbers. Same for the second one. 10 divided by 2, 5. 10 divided by 5, 2. 2 times 2, 4. And 10 divided by 10 gives me 1, so we're left with 7 up top. Okay. And have we seen this system before? We have a couple pages back when we're talking about it's helpful to first get the equation in the form equivalent to the standard form. We've already dealt with that system. 
And how did we have to get there? Just to kind of trigger your memory again. If I want to get rid of the x's, to multiply top one by negative five, bottom one by two. So those are opposites. You can add them together and eliminate them. So if you want to run through that one, again, just to get some practice with those fractions, go for it. We've seen the solution to the system. 25 sevenths, negative 19 sevenths. So you have all the work, you have the solutions. If you want to give it a shot, run with it. So now we have those two methods to solve systems algebraically, and the third, graphing it. So looking at the picture, seeing if they intersect, and where it happens. So we have a lot of different checks. Discuss when is the easiest to use substitution, when is the easiest to use elimination, when is it easiest to graph. Generally we don't graph just because it takes too much time, and we can't use calculators in this class, but it is an option.